So what is going on guys, today we are going to see how to create full screen effects. It's a pretty cool technique for when you are low on life or on fire or any other status effects, for example. It can apply to the whole screen or only to the corners, it's super versatile. So without further ado, let's jump right into this and if you want to get your hands on this project and many other assets, it's all available on my Patreon's page, links below. So in order for the full screen effect to work, we are going to need a little script from Cyan, it's called a Bleed Pass, and he created this wonderful feature that will make our life much easier when it comes to full screen effects. You can create on the Bleed script and download the script or click on this button to copy the content and then in Unity, with right click you can create a C-sharp script, rename it to Bleed, double click to open it up and paste with Ctrl V this entire code. Then press Ctrl S to save and wait a little bit for Unity to compile. And now we are ready to create full screen effects. So the way this works is in the forward renderer, in the rendered data. We need to add a render feature and as you can see now we have a bleed. But in order to find the forward renderer, you can go to edit and in project settings, in graphics, select the scriptable render pipeline setting. Unity will highlight its position and up here in the renderer list you can click it and Unity once again will highlight where the forward renderer is in your project and then you can add a bleed down here. I'm going to rename this to tutorial bleed. I'm going to rename this to tutorial bleed. As you can see we can assign a material and that's when creating a shader becomes super useful. So let's do exactly that because now we are able to create any type of effect we want to appear on the screen. So with right click you can create a shader graph, URP, unlit shader graph or a blank shader graph. And then I'm going to rename this to Voronoi underscore full screen tutorial, double click to open it up and since I created a blank shader graph I'm going to say the target is universal and the material is unlit. I'm going to turn on allow material overwrite so we can change all of these settings directly in the inspector. For the surface type we can already say it's transparent. Right, so the first thing we are going to need is kind of a mask, something that works like a vignette. In this case I'm going to apply a fiery effect in the borders of the screen. So to have this mask we are going to use the polar coordinates because if we split this and connect the R channel to a power node, as you can see, we, can now, we have now control over a black hole, <laughs> which is going to work as our mask. But before the power we can actually multiply this by a smaller value in case we want to have a smoother mask, a smoother vignette. Ok, we are going to create properties for this in a moment. This is our vignette. Now if you connect this to the base color, if you save it and go ahead and create a material out of this shader, and then select the forward renderer and assign the new material to the bleed material. What will happen now is that this render pass is applying our material after rendering opacks. If we want a full screen effect, we need to say that the event is going to happen after rendering transparents. And if you don't want this to be affected by post-processing effects, you can select after rendering post-processing effects. But we are going to select after rendering transparents because I want this to be affected by my post-rendering effects, which is a global volume with a bloom and a vignette. Right, so let me select the game window, 16 by 9 aspect. Now we can create any type of effect we want. But as you can see, it's black in the middle, we cannot see anything from our scene. We are going to create a new texture and call it specifically main text, exactly like this with the upper cases, because this reference must be named underscore main text for this to work out and you can never apply a texture to this property. In fact, it doesn't even need to be exposed. So let's sample this and now for this to work out, if we multiply this it won't work as you can see, we can see a little bit of our scene but it's black in the middle. So we need to kind of lerp this 
We could use something different, but a LARP will do. And a LARP will blend between A and B. The T value will go from 0 to 1, and it will control the amount of A and B. Which means we can create a float called the full screen intensity for the T value of the LARP. It's going to be a slider between 0 and 1. And this can be connected to the base color if we save this. Now in our inspector, we are able to control the intensity of this effect, which there isn't much going on for now. So let's spice this up. A very quick way to add an effect to this is by using a Voronoi noise. You could use as well a texture, any other texture you would like, but with this Procedurally generated noise, we can, for example, multiply with the power node and connect this to the LERP. And now the feeling we get is a little bit different. To have a better perception of this, let's add the color property. Say the mode it's HDR with a white color and alpha at 100. And this color we can use it after this multiply. We can multiply it as well. And now if we save this, we are able, for example, to say that it's red, very commonly used when you are low on life, for example. But let's go a little bit further. Let's animate this Voronoi, for example. We can use a time node and multiply it with a float called the Voronoi speed. We can already create another float for the Voronoi scale, which is going to have a default value of 5. And we can connect it to the cell density. For the speed, we can say 1 for the default value and connect it to the time and multiply it with the time. If you connect this to the angle offset, it will wiggle, it will move the Voronoi, it will basically animate it. If we save this, as you can see now, we have a little bit of motion, we can control the scale and the intensity of the color as well and the other parameters. Another useful property is a float to control the vignette intensity and another flow to control the vignette radius power. The default value of 7.5. And for the Voronoi intensity, a default value of 0 0.7. It can also be a slider between 0 and 1. And we can connect it right here to the multiply. As you can see, this will allow us to control the vignette power, the intensity, the radius, some super useful properties. And one last thing we can do is connect the Voronoi to a power node. And then create a property to control the B value of the power node. We can call it the Voronoi power, for example, with a default value of 2 or 1. And as you can see now, you have control over the amount of Voronoi you can have. It's quite useful whenever you want to create some kind of flamish effect, for example. Another cool thing we can do with Voronoi, and it's very simple, is use the cells output. We get this low poly shapes all around of our screen. If we set it to blue, we can get a really interesting sci-fi effect or something similar. So that's it for this tutorial. As you can see, you can do some very quick full screen effects with this technique. And thanks to the Blitz script from Cyan, it's super easy. All we gotta do is create some cool shaders for whatever type of full screen effect we are trying to achieve. This project is available on my Patreon's page, as well as many others. And a big thank you goes to each patron for supporting me 
And a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Adrian Biedriski, Elshedr Carvalho, Austin Schneider, Aviat Tobali, Brandon Olive, Kruby Dubidu, Daniel Mrazek, Desmond Tang, Diego Marques, Edward Chai, Frank Stryker, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Jorgen Lin, John Nix, KC Miller, Kenan Anselm, Little Tsai, Maxim, Mark Anum, Mateus Bragança, Mograph Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Quentin Adstat, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ramiz Al Taba, Revnet Games, Sergio Oliveira, Tuan Tran, Very Suta, Will Huse, Will Poilion, and Ingu Daz. Thank you all for your support, you guys are amazing, you guys rock. To everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.